I did. I shouldn't be surprised. Since you indoctrinated Robin into crime fighting at the ripe old age of nine. Robin needed to help bring the men who murdered his family to justice. So he could turn out like you? So that he wouldn't. When we started this team, I was desperate to be in charge. I need to talk to Aqualad. Just Aqualad. Not anymore. And, and that's not even the worst of it. You, you can't tell Batman. Nothing leaves this room. Batman, we're ready to use what you taught us. Or why teach us at all? I always wanted, expected, to, to grow up and, and become him. And, and the hero bit, I'm still all in. But that thing inside of him, the thing that, that, that drives him to sacrifice everything for the sake of his mission. No! He's offering you as a sacrifice. Aqualad would never do that. You're right. Aqualad would sacrifice himself. A mistake that just cost us our leader. That's not me. I, I don't want to be the Batman anymore. Effective forecast is when you make a decision in the present based on a prediction of what you think your future emotional reaction will be like towards an event, like the idea that you'll only find true everlasting happiness when you have two wives. I mean knives. I gotta tell you, this is pretty terrific. As Wilson and Gilbert argued, people weigh potential losses more heavily than corresponding gains. The reason why I'm opening with this definition is to really highlight this idea of how anticipation towards desired futures shape how we are in the present, and not in necessarily the most rational ways. Young Justice's Dick Grayson is all about this. A kid realising the future he thought for himself wasn't what he wanted, but falls into a version of it anyways, becoming scarred, losing himself, until he has to come back. I'm a little overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed, Freeze was underwhelmed, why isn't anyone ever just whelmed? We're introduced to little Robin as someone who's not really there yet when it comes to his capacity to be a leader. He's actively too experienced with Batman to adequately operate within a larger group, where everyone else aren't as equally accomplished and trained in cooperative work. As a result, Lil Dick's role becomes the hacker dude, as Cowder leads instead. And Robin is like the best character ever. He's so cool, funny, intelligent, effective, angsty, but also always smiling. Robin was trained by the best to be the best, but because he's so young that unlike his mentor, he gets to enjoy what he's doing. <laughs> There's two moments I want to use to highlight the idea that Dick is the golden child. The first is in the very beginning, where Roy and Wally are angry and Coward is disappointed over their condescending treatment from the League. Dick isn't though. He's more interested in outdoing the League by investigating Cadmus before them. Batman's suspicious. Maybe we should investigate. Solve their case before they do. Dick Grayson is naturally not a rebellious kid, but instead he plays around within the margins of his discipline in order to excel and be noticed. Whoa, how are you doing that? Same system as the Batcave. The second moment is when Dick is hurt from Batman only speaking to Cowder alone. So Bruce seeing this decides to give his son some attention by pretending a game of basketball is training. Hand-eye coordination. One on one? Both of them deal with the pain of losing their parents every day by serving the mission, but for Dick, he doesn't have the emotional dissociation like his father. Instead, the mission is his life, his game, his honor, and he wouldn't want it to be any other way. However, the show then throws in the suicide mission episode, where in a training exercise, Dick finally gets to be leader, and we see something quite dark. For a 14 year old, he's extremely cold and calculating. When the surviving members of the team hold on to the hope that everyone that was disintegrated were actually teleported onto the mothership, he never believed and used this hope to send Connor to his death in order to have a chance to blow up the mothership. You knew. You knew from the beginning why we were really here. When push comes to shove, Dick doesn't hesitate. However, after waking up, he can't compartmentalize his feelings. He can't stop the guilt, actually. I finally become leader and wind up sending all of my friends to their deaths. I, I know I did what I had to. 
but I hated it. Within the big picture development of Dick Grayson's biography, the first season effectively introduced a child soldier who's just too good to see the danger. In fact, his holographic computer interface literally has his own face in it, smiling. <laughs> He knowingly uses this lightness to be even more calm, more efficient, but also more obsessive when it comes to looking at things objectively. There's a line in the episode, Performance, where Dick leads the team into an off-the-books mission. I left you behind because you know my backstory. I didn't want my best pal questioning my objectivity. Dude, that's what a best pal's for. This exchange summarizes the trouble Dick has. His head is like a jumble mess of wires, where part of him doesn't want to be questioned. He just wants to be the man, doing what needs to be done. But the more human part of him that Bruce actively went out of his way to foster, wants to be held for responsibility as a human being. Well, Dick, I'll miss you. It's Dan. Dan Danger. Son, you've grown. But some things never change like the sight of a Grayson on the trapeze. You can't fake that, can't hide it. So, do an old ringmaster one last favor? Thus, this is exactly what his arc in Invasion is actually centered on. After five years, he is very much the leader he was destined to be. I can send a squad to handle the ran end of things, and to find out more about those missing 16 hours, without causing an intergalactic incident. Do it. He's taken Batman's role as the dispatcher, but unlike the old man, he's more personal, encouraging, and actively connects with the kids around him. Dude! Way to get your feet wet! He's a bridge between generations, but he's also a part of a really ambitious plan to take on the light on their own terms when it comes to secrets and lies. He and Cowder forges a plan to send him undercover. We'll manage. The cost of which involves faking Artemis' death, blowing up Mount Justice, and so on. You don't leave a guy a lot of options. You've no idea what your secrets have done to us. All this Machiavellian scheming actually totally works. The Light's plans with the Reach is foiled. There's a great victory. Agreed. Calder, this has been a good night. Maybe the best we've had since the three of us first took off for Cadmus five plus years ago. Come on, enjoy the moment, my friend. You've earned it. But this also all leads to a massive battle. Where Dix's best friends. Where Wally dies. And all of a sudden, the confidence Dick had to commit everything to the mission, the people he deploys, the secrets and pain he causes, it's deflated him. And so he calmly walks away. Agreed, but Dick... I need a break, Calder. You, me, Wally, we, we founded this team. Without him... I understand. Two years later, Dick gets the old gang back together for what was supposed to be a simple mission, but it actually then snowballs into him becoming responsible for a whole new group of kids. Dick, despite still being the same old guy, smiling. Hi, again. I need to borrow your guy here. Underneath, he's actually lost a lot of his confidence in being a leader. The show never makes a big deal about it. Instead, we see it when he relies on Roy to tell him what he needs to hear, even though he already knows what it is. Is it just the red hair? What are you talking about? Your need for a Wally West substitute. What? You needed someone who knows you. I get it. You needed someone to give you a reality check, to keep you honest, to tell you what no one else will tell the boss. You're babbling. Yeah, no fine. Wally's not here, so I'll say it. What? What are you gonna say? You already know. You're dropping the ball with these Markovian kids. Taking care of strays wasn't the mission. <laughs> the mission is what the mission becomes. You know that. Those kids need you. Your team needs you. <sighs> it was just one up. I don't do teams anymore. You do now. Hey, cut it up. Put me down. <sighs> This moment's coupled with the one where Dick has a fever dream where it's like the good old days again with Wally and they're taking on the parademons and he hacks into the javelin. Life was like a video game once. And for a moment, we get to remember how much he used to laugh. <laughs> but now, the mission isn't a game anymore. It's about deciding who to sacrifice and it's all just about surviving the hurt. However, we also get this moment where we see how Dick actively and regularly resolves himself of these feelings to carry on. And it's when he confronts Brion's inability to let go of his past, which features one of the funniest moments ever. You hacked my phone? Stay focused, Brion. Yeah, wow, wow what, a, what a reaction, Dick. Dick teaches him. Are you a man perpetually looking back at what he's lost? Or a man looking forward? 
to what he might become. You and I okay? And are you okay? <laughs> I wasn't, but... Moving forward, I think I will be. This moment reveals to us everything, how Dick is able to keep going, not linger in his pain, because he knows what anticipating the wrong thing is like. Thus, Dick at the end gathers the entire superhero community, who comes together just for him. I wasn't sure they'd all respond. You command more respect than you realize. And it's here, Dick nominates Black Lightning as leader, so the heroes will no longer rely on using secrets and lies to fight their light. You sure about this? Oh yeah. Thanks for coming, everyone. Word's spreading fast, so we might as well get it out in the open. Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Miss Martian, Oracle, Robin, and I have been running a secret task force, coordinating all our teams and squads in an attempt to beat the light at their own game. We kept it a secret in a misguided attempt to protect you. We've had successes, failures, compromises, deceptions, and betrayals. It is now clear that despite our best intentions, we made a mistake. Which means we need a new leader. One who has consistently acted as the conscience of the League. And although I'm not a member, I'd like to take the liberty of nominating Black Lightning. In this moment, we truly see that Dick didn't end up like Batman. Instead, Batman followed his lead. He made sure that serving the mission wasn't about sacrificing everyone and every moral standard. It was about serving and taking all of those things into account. This moment is the culmination of so many specific details for Dick and for the broader show in general. But then he also shows up in Phantoms, which doesn't really initiate a new arc. He instead just sort of sticks around as a friend, there to inform Artemis of Connor's passing, help Calder mourn. And when Wally died, I was a total jerk and dumped the whole team on you, not thinking about your grief at all. But also there to be a detective for Zatanna to find him. Then he takes on Zod and the Phantom Zone prisoners like a badass until he gets hit in the head and is then present in McGann and Connor's wedding as a groomsman. Dick Grayson here is someone with a really realistic contradiction. He's on one hand always cheerful, always inviting, always mature, always responsible and always humble. But also lying is in his nature. There's an intrinsic calculated coldness to him that he can't help. Where using secrets to protect but also use people for a greater plan is a strength and a flaw he can't help with. Does this friend of yours speak the truth? No. This juxtaposition between the happy face and the Machiavellian face also represents how much the circus boy showmanship is still inside him, creating his own version of Batman's pragmatic style. But unlike Batman, he understands that in a circus act, you've got to trust your fellow performers to create the best act. And that's the big difference. I'll step up. I'm gonna make it right with Halo, Brion, and Jace. Never doubted it for a moment. In effective forecasting, there's this idea called focalism, where you can overestimate how much you will think about the event in the future, and also underestimate which other events will actually influence your thoughts and feelings more. As Wilson and Gilbert also said, it can be corrected to some degree by asking people to think carefully about the many other events that will demand their attention in the future. I'm bringing this up very late into the video because by nature, this is Dick's greater role. The story of Dick Grayson is the story of the mission, a first gen generation child born into it. Business as usual. Thus, also being the first generation born into it, he also see things at a different angle, where things that are truly unacceptable, things that truly matter, and things that are truly declining, is all visible to him. The mission is not sustainable without trust. Trust which allows yourself to still be human. Trust that doesn't neglect the thoughts and feelings of your comrades. And trust which allows you to be held accountable so you don't become just as bad as your enemies who are also lying and scheming too. So the point is, we should all be a good dick. <sighs> so fucking bad. <laughs>
So after the Miss Martian video, I was gonna do the Superboy video, but I just didn't end up feeling it because that would mean I would have to go through a lot of the same footage again, which would have been very, very boring. So I deviated and did Dick Grayson instead. The original idea for this video was the effective forecasting stuff would kind of thread through the entire piece, kind of like the self-esteem academia did for McGann. But then I realized Dick's concern with these ideas doesn't really come back strongly enough regularly for that sort of structure. So instead I went ahead and used it to bookend the video instead. Anyways, I have no idea which of the Young Justice character I'm studying for the next video. Uh, it could be Artemis, it could be Roy, who knows. It could be Cowder maybe even. Anyways, special thanks to everyone on Patreon. You guys rule and I'll be back. <laughs>